Okay, so this is the video on the kinetic molecular theory for our gas unit. Here we're going to be looking at the properties of ideal gases specifically relating to uh, the kinetic molecular theory. Um, and then we're going to go from that to uh, defining effusion versus uh, diffusion. So as far as the kinetic molecular theory goes, we first look at the properties of ideal gases. And technically, guys, you should already have heard this. It's just a matter of pitting it from a generalization into a theory. And remember, a theory is just a step away from law. And then we're going to go into Graham's law of um, effusion, and then we're going to look at some diffusion, too. Now. The kinetic molecular theory takes everything we know about gases and tries to put it in a way that would explain why it's accurate. And so depending on where you're reading, there's four to five postulates that are um, used. So remember, we've already said a bunch of times gases are spread out, and then the particles are in rapid, random, constant motion. Um, OK? So the first postulate says the volume of gas particles is negligible compared to the volume that they occupy. So like consider a flask, for example. You have a few gas molecules in here spread out. Now, what this is really saying is that the volume of this whole container is very, very large in comparison to the small amount that these gas particles occupy. And that kind of makes sense. It doesn't mean that the um, it doesn't mean that the particles don't take up space, it just means that the space that they occupy is negligible when we're talking about the ideal gas law. Next, um, gas particles are in constant, rapid, and random motion. And that when they collide, there are only elastic forces there. There's no molecular interactions. Um, all collisions are elastic. So it's kind of like um, it bumps into a wall, and then it bounces back with the exact same kinetic energy. And then finally, the kinetic energy of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. So looking at um, the kinetic molecular theory, consider two balloons. Let's just say for our sake, one has hydrogen and one has helium. Uh, these are the same volume. If they have exactly the same volume, oops, nope, I wanted to do hydrogen and neon. Um, do the balloons have the same or different pressure? Pause this and think about it, guys. Um, I usually let class argue about it for quite a while. Um, but you should come to the conclusion Um, that if P1V1 is equal to P2V2, this is Boyle's law, then if this volume and this volume are the same, then this pressure and this pressure must also be the same. Same volume, again we have neon and hydrogen, same or different temperature. Again, pause and consider before you listen to my answer. Hopefully, you remember that Charles's law says that V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And so if these volumes are the same, these T's must also be the same. The identity of the gas does not matter here. 
Do they have the same or different moles? Well, N1 over V1 equals N2 over V2. Avogadro's law tells us that if this number is the same, the moles must also be the same. Okay? Same or different grams? Well, we just said a second ago that the moles are the same. So I'm just going to say one mole and one mole. The grams, you have to consider molar mass. So one mole of helium, or excuse me, one mole of hydrogen, is going to have a mass of 2.02, .02, 2 times 1. 1 times 2 gives us a total grams of 2.02 .02 grams in the balloon. For neon, if we had one mole of neon, every time we have one mole, I think this is 20 grams. 19.99, something like that. So you get 20. And so they have different grams because their molar masses are different. Now, looking at the kinetic molecular theory, knowing that the gas particles are in constant motion, we can actually talk about how those particles are going to behave. And one of the biggest ways we do that is by looking at diffusion and effusion. Diffusion, you typically see this a lot in liquids. If you add a Kool-Aid packet or a tea bag to a glass of water, you can see the color start in one area, and then it spreads out throughout the entire um, region. The same happens for gases. Um, somebody opens a bag of Doritos somewhere in the building, uh, somewhere in the classroom. Um, it doesn't take but a few minutes for the odor, that gas containing the smell, uh, to reach everybody's nostrils, okay? Um, and so a gas diffuses the same way a liquid does. Now diffusion just means particles are moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, and that's going to continue until it's essentially the same all the way throughout. That is different from effusion, where you have um, a gas that will escape through a small hole. And so um, you have particles that are bouncing around, and then eventually they sometimes go down this hole and then spread into a different chamber. Now, either the bigger the hole or the smaller the particle, the faster this is going to happen. Um, it's going to be a lot easier for a particle this size to go through a particle that, to, through a hole that size than for a particle this size to go through a hole that same size, right? So the bigger the hole or the smaller the mass, the faster effusion can happen. Now, don't get bogged down by these equations. These equations, unlike the gas laws, will not be on your exam. It is an explanation that I'm going to give. I just said the speed at which something effuses is going to be inversely proportional to the molar mass. This is how it relates. The velocity is actually equal to the square root or proportional to the square root of the molar mass of the gas. The smaller the molar mass, the faster it moves. Think about this in terms of a baseball versus a bowling ball. If I take a baseball and I throw it from here across the room, chances are it's going to go through the window on the wall. Um, if I took a bowling ball and I tried to throw that same uh, force to a bowling ball, the bowling ball is going to go about two feet and then drop. If you've ever seen somebody bowl in the bowling alley where they forget to let go, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, it's not going to go as far or as fast as the smaller ball. So that's kind of what I mean when I say the smaller it is, the faster it happens. Same thing down here. This is actually Graham's law of effusion. The rate of effusion of a gas is directly proportional to the 1 over its molar mass. Um, and then you take the square root of that. Um, 
And so you can actually compare rates of two different gases by setting it equal to this equation. Again, I'm not going to put this on your exam um, in terms of a mathematical equation. I will use this more as a concept question more than anything else, okay? You have a lot of equations already this unit. This one is not the most important. With that being said, that's it for this unit. Uh, I mean, excuse me, this video. Um, hopefully, it helps. Where is, there it is.